Well, here we are, and Grant, uh, this is your field, and uh, Lauren, you've probably got the most experience. Uh, Grant, how many years have you farmed this piece of ground? Yeah, I'll be about six. This is your sixth season. That's right. Young farmer here at Copeland, Kansas, just getting started, and he's got a got a P51 Mustang toolbar. And Lauren, you've had the Xactric system for seven or eight years, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I think something like that with the... Uh, um, other pump and then the new pump that I got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lauren has done every year a uh, great set of test plots for us and looking at the correct rate of nitrogen. Uh, they come in timely. You work with the uh, Pioneer uh, seed corn guy too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. They brought their uh, scale uh, out mm -hmm. and weighed it for me. And then the, you do it with big plots too, don't you? Yeah, you yeah, generally uh, mm -hmm. clear through the field. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, invariably we find. Uh, I think, uh, if I remember right, in, in those seven years, it's always been between 140 and 160 was about it, huh? Yeah, that's what I have found uh, uh, on my farm. Once I get 160 pounds on, I'm I'm good to go. It it uh, out of two years of uh, or uh, three years testing, two of the years the 160 beat the test plot. Uh -huh. uh, we would do uh, up to as high as 200, mm -hmm. and um, one year, I think maybe we gained three fourths of a bushel by 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. But it looks like once you get 160 on, the corn's pretty well satisfied. And all this testing was done with taps, triammonium polyphosphate, um, and done with about what 40 pounds of P, if I remember right, or was it 50? Uh, it, it varied some. Um, sometimes we would add. Uh, like eight gallon of uh, phos and four of thiosol. Uh huh. And um, so that would be pretty close to 28 pounds of P. And then humic uh, acid is new, and this field uh, has some humic on it too. Is that right? Yeah, I mm -hmm. think Grant put hydrohum on this yeah. field. Yeah. We the first year of trying yeah. hydrohum mixed with it. Yeah. Well, this is no till, and you've done primarily strip till, so this is a big change. And um, and of course, Lauren, you're probably the most experienced. What do you think of, of the no-till stand? Uh, I'm real happy with the stand. Uh, yeah, uh, it it looks good. Um, tasseled out nice. Um, as far as conserving moisture, we have conserved the most moisture we possibly could on this field. Way I feel. And this being the 2012 drought year, set two years in a row now. She's looking pretty doggone good, hanging in there. Corn on corn in this rotation. So we were walking out in the corn here and we were walking right down those old corn rows and we were finding we could dig around and find those little P51 marks where they had run about seven and a half inches on each side of the established corn rows we see here. So really it was a lot of fun walking out in that corn seeing those old corn stalks out there and that organic life and that bio balance that's going on right at the surface. The 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 I, f I thought the uh, the uh, the roots looked very, very good. Well, the brace good. roots uh, looked real good uh, on those corn rows out there. We're very happy with a uniform stand. I think it looks just really good for a no-till stand. What do you what are you thinking about it, Grant? Yeah, uh, it come up fairly good, a little uneven uh, when it first was emerging, but I'm very happy with the way it it looks now. It evened up as it grew and. Uh, I think it's going to be a good, good potential for a, a great yield yeah. out here. And and you told me there must be uh, you're probably the only guy that's no-tilled corn on corn uh, in the area. Well, for this particular year, I know some guys did it last year, but uh, the neighbor has tried it some, but there's very few out here. You know, another thing that's going on here is the dryland pivot corner. Uh, right next to us, and this has been planted at 12,000 population no-till. Is that right, Grant? That's right. And this is a, a pioneer variety, and uh, for being as hot as it's been, you know, 100 and plus, what, 7, 8 degrees, as hot as that for 10, 15 days in a row. I mean, it was a it was a cooker. The raccoons lost all their tails out here, I think. But uh, if you take a look across on the other adjoining pivot corner, that's with tillage, and so you got a pretty dramatic comparison uh, between no-till corn and tillage corn in a pivot corner. And uh, Lauren, uh, you didn't want to open up the ground at all. It was done actually with some solution 32, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, we just felt like we couldn't afford to open the ground up 
um, dribbled on uh, 32 percent behind the planter and then did get a little rain just a little later to, to incorporate it um, good stand on it and the corns actually hung on pretty good um, I would have never thought it would do what it did yeah but you can see the color looks pretty good and uh, if a little more rain would fall it definitely would uh, be able to harvest some corn yep. where they have run all right well i i'm really impressed this is this has been a, just a wonderful day uh it's about eight o'clock in the evening now and the sun's getting low but what a beautiful day to go to look at a cornfield that's been side dressed with well not side dressed pre-plant banded with taps and it's been an excellent uh, return on the money, I think. Uh, how, how much nitrogen and phosphate and sulfur did you put on on this, Grant? On the corner? Yeah. Well, no, out here in the, here. Uh, in the main uh, field. 165 pounds, and then we put about 6 gallons of thiosol and 4 of phosphate. Yep. Phosphate was expensive this year and just back her down a little bit. Yep, yep. it was. Yeah, I, I put the hydro U in and felt like that would compensate a little for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, good results. Yep, and a little zinc in there too. Yep, a little zinc. Any other micros in there? I think, I believe that was it. And how about the planter? How much polyphosphate uh, on the planter or what'd you do there? Uh, actually, I kind of split the mix. Mm -hmm. I didn't put that, that was total amount. Oh, total amount. So wow. I split that and added water uh -huh. to make my gallons up so yeah. put about total of 15 gallon on about seven eight with the p51s and then about five six seven with the oh yeah planter. well that's not the ortho ratio that's uh grant's uh, mortgage lifter <laughs> that's a special blend isn't it boy you're gonna hang in there uh, this farming game, aren't you? Must not be a long-term lease, huh? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta cut corners where I can, but you yeah. know, I, I wanted to get a starter on, and so I kind of split sure. it. Sure. Got the both. Got the well, yeah, that's the deal. You know, when nutrients get expensive, you just don't use as much. That's no. just the way it works. It's just an economic deal. It's the agronomist might convince you that you have to have so many pounds of pea, but it's economics. That's the only way it works. If corn uh, would drop down to two dollars uh, a bushel you'd be doing something totally different for sure you know? oh yeah 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 so uh what do you think alex uh we go on home or shall we stick around here and camp out tonight you camp in the corn by the rattlesnakes and i'll be in the hotel rattlesnakes <laughs> really well that does it i'm going back to dodge city and i'm going to watch crystal with sierra